Uh, all right. Enough yawning, Dominic. Yeah. As, um, I'm to take a nap, huh? It's not a good time to sleep because <laughs> we're live. <laughs> Cheers. All right. It's going to be a cup of tea for you. How you been? I've been great, man. I'm, I'm doing really well. I'm celebrating life because life is really good. Yeah. Really rich and good right now. Celebrating life. That's the way to move forward. So today we decided we're going to talk about this big subject. Oh, yeah. It's a big, big topic. It's called the hero's journey. And this is something that everybody goes on. You mm -hmm. know, whether you are aware of it or not, it's kind of like a cycle. It's kind of like a pattern of mm -hmm. life and progression that we're going to explore today. We're All right. Some exploration. Sounds good. Let's just begin with um, saying that uh, that is the purpose of life. Yes. Is it accurate to say that? Yeah, you could say that. Okay. It's to go on the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. All right. So, and if it is a purpose of life, which means that following that journey, we yeah. experience our uh, fulfillment and bliss. Totally. That's where it leads. Okay. So, we've got two things. And uh, the third thing, I think, is it accurate to say that by following your journey, by following your bliss, and... Uh, it's not about the destination, but it's about the process. Totally. That's absolutely accurate. And that's okay. another thing because because we're never going to get there, so mm -hmm. to speak, where life does not end. Okay. You know, we, we're going to go through thousands of heroes journeys in our life. But overall, this path, which is the path forward, that's the only way to get to that bliss and fulfillment. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So I believe Helen Keller said, I mean, just, we just find out. <laughs> <laughs> we just looked it up. It was, yeah. it was fun. So Helen Keller said that life is either daring adventure or nothing at all. What do you think about that? Well, it's true because you, you do have the choice. You do have the choice whether or not to make it an adventure mm -hmm. or to stay pretending that you're not playing mm -hmm. the hero's journey. Right. You know, you what can, happens if you do that? If you stay put, uh -huh. you're gonna feel a lot of suffering. Okay. You're gonna bingo you're, bango. Yeah. You're gonna suffer. Yeah. It's gonna suck. Okay. So for people listening here, this is a big, big subject. There's something that we not we may not talk about it a lot, but this is we're talking about the solution to suffering. Yes. This is one this is one model that we can use to help us understand our own suffering. And also to keep us on the path uh, towards bliss, towards success, towards basically anything that we want in life, but more so just consistent in our growth, mm -hmm. you know, because there are a lot of ways that we can feel stuck in life. Right. There are a lot of times that we can face shadows. Right. But when we follow the hero's path, we, when we follow the path of the hero's journey, mm -hmm. we always wind up. First of all, we're, we're, when we when we follow the hero's journey, we're framing life in an affirmative way. Right. When we when we realize that it's okay. it's not us against our problems mm -hmm. necessarily, it's us on a path it's of ascension. Path. You know. Right. We're, so uh, also, given all that information that we just discussed, um, would you say that it's accurate to say uh, that if you're not happy? You must be not on your hero's journey. Right. Well, you're in you're in one of the phases yeah. of the hero's journey, and you are you're you're deliberating probably, or okay. you're or you're not you're unaware. You're unaware. Yeah. You know, you're not sure what what's going to happen next. Mm. Okay, but then also, it's not to say that you don't have the challenges on the hero's journey. There's a lot of challenges and a lot of emotional uh, um, experiences that we experience that may not be pleasant. But they're very different from <coughs> the, the pain and suffering we experience when we're not even participating in it. Yeah. Yeah, well, really, it's, 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 it's kind of like, you know, if you, if you clean your kitchen every week, it's still going to get dirty. Mm -hmm. But if you only clean your kitchen once a year, it's going to be filthy. Right. Right? So it's, I think it's the difference between consistency on your path that makes a huge difference because 90 percent of the time if you clean your kitchen every week or whenever you clean it you're gonna have 90 percent clean kitchen mm. but if you only clean it every year or whenever you finally get around to it you're gonna be suffering you're gonna be on this all this filth and distraction mm. and how many people are 
out there are following a, some sort of a machine, some sort of industrial complex, rather than their own uh, journey that uh, is uh, specialized for them. And uh, so we have this dynamic where a lot of people are unhappy and they're put into this situation where they have to do something that they don't enjoy. That's right, yeah. And it's also being sold to us that is normality, that it's okay. That, yeah. if, that if you don't enjoy this, there's some neurotransmitter disbalance in your brain and we're going to fix you with the pills. Right. Yeah, and I feel like most of us at one time or another, we find ourselves in, in some kind of machine like that. Yeah. And I think the trick is to, to connect to your hero's journey, to connect to your purpose, your kind of your why, your, your, your soul's calling towards something, and, and understanding what you really want out of life and what you really enjoy. Mm -hmm. And then once you're, you're, you're in the machine, but you can find a path out, you know? Because, because that process of connecting to that and, and keeping that as your priority, your main where you're pouring your energy, that's going to slowly ease you out of this game. Mm -hmm. How um, do we exit this machine? That's a good question. You know, I, I, I think that, that, that there are many ways to exit the machine and that ultimately it becomes a game of, okay, so one way, mm -hmm. one way is meditation. Okay. One, one method, let's say, of mm -hmm. beginning to exit the machine okay. is, is the path of self-knowledge. Great advice. Yeah. So if you start with meditation, or anything that that helps you know yourself whether it's journaling but but you build that space for yourself to get clear on the vision and to get clear and tapped into the energy of who you really are and why you really came here that's gonna begin to shift the way you interact with the machine and gradually over time you're gonna see little cracks in the machine where you can act you can take different steps to to build more of your own you know, whether you want to build your own business or whether you want to um, just totally get off the grid, whatever your your calling is to do, yeah. you're going to see the opportunities because you know you're focused on what you want mm -hmm. instead of coming home every night from this job that you don't like mm -hmm. and then distracting yourself. Okay, so what do you have to say for somebody, let's say, who works at this type of position? Yeah. and they don't like it and uh, they don't enjoy it and they don't see it as their life purpose but um perhaps they intuitively know what's their true purpose and uh, perhaps they're telling themselves that i mean there's no way i can be an actor there's no way i can be you know this or that like what kind of advice do you have for a person who intuitively knows what yeah. would what they would be great at, uh, but there's that fear holding them back and uh, keeping them in that machine. Totally. Well, well, the important part of that is to take the first step, whatever it is, because you know that the reason you're living is because you have that passion. Mm -hmm. You know, the reason you're going to work mm -hmm. is that so that you can get up and keep dreaming about that right. thing that you want to create. And um, it's okay because this this job that you don't like is a step. Mm -hmm. on that path towards whatever it is that will really fulfill you so 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 investing in that in the small ways first when you have the time and energy because we all have free time we all have free energy even when we're really really booked we can find a little space mm -hmm. we can get up a little earlier we can stay up a little later just to work on that passion and you recommend to use that time for meditation for any time you yes. have any spare time we have mm -hmm. and no matter how busy we are the first step is to use that time, that little spare time, whether it's 10, 15 minutes, for meditation. Sure, at the start, and, and build a consistent meditation practice, absolutely. Everybody can hugely benefit from that. And once you have a consistent meditation practice, once you have that motivation that you, you've, you've been able to work through your beliefs a little bit more and you understand mm -hmm. it's actually possible mm -hmm. if you do want to be an actor, if you do want to... Um, whatever it else else that it is you want to do once you have that vision clear then you can begin practicing that vision mm -hmm. in your life already okay I think this is something people get caught up in is they think they don't have the time or they think they're going to do it in three months but three months is always three months never comes yeah. you have yeah. to take little steps little steps that'll make that 
one hour turn into a two hour turn into a three hour micro progressions yes micro progressions yeah and then uh during that time when we meditate um there's a lot of insights that come along oh yeah and uh also we dare to dream oh yeah okay yeah. so this, this is a great window i mean the first step is to meditate a little bit and uh, make it as a, a regular practice yeah and then dare to dream yeah. like literally have daydreams about the success that you want to have right this is huge there, there's a lot to unpack here so a lot of people don't want to start meditating because it might just suck at first right you know we have to accept that that don't have expectations why does it suck well it sucks because you have to you have to take charge of your your mental habits at first mm -hmm. you have to realize okay i'm thinking about my groceries i'm thinking about this person that broke my heart i'm thinking about all these different things mm -hmm. and these are just emotional charges that have built up and they're running your life mm -hmm. they're on autopilot and once you take that courage the courageous step to just sit and watch all these things unfold you're going to start interrupting the programming mm -hmm. with consciousness with your with the light of your awareness you're intercepting this feedback loop that mm -hmm. happens on all these different levels all these different habits mm -hmm. of energy that are moving through you so you're saying i'm sitting here meditating yeah. and i'm beginning to meditate yeah I'm and it sucks mind. you're distracted you're like right. oh shit i want to just uh I have do like, anything but this. Right. I have nine to five worries. I have all sorts of things that popping into my mind and I'm yeah. sitting here and then the thought comes m to my mind saying like, why are you wasting your time? What is this? But what you're saying is that uh, sitting there watching these thoughts go by is the first step and that there is a a very peaceful and quiet moment after that and having faith in that there will be that moment where the thoughts stop and mm -hmm. then you are on this floaty trance like state yeah where there is no there are no limits and everything is great and you feel yeah. a total peace from that point then you get to get the control yeah. back in in your life you can be meditating for 10 years and it still might take you some time when you sit down to get to that state it's more like it, or you could start meditating this week and you could slip you could drop into that in less than five minutes right so to not have that expectation of every time i sit down to meditate i'm gonna transcend and have total bliss all the time mm -hmm. it's possible to do that with consistent practice it's possible to really slip in and out of that trance really easily and yet at first it's it's a disclaimer it's important for people to realize it is going to work with it is going to work for you, but you have to invest a little bit of time. It's a practice. It's like okay, yeah, just like going to the gym at first. Totally, you can barely lift up the weight. Yeah, you're gonna be sore the next day, but yeah, it's worth the work. You're so, building muscles. Right. So you you are essentially uh, exercising your mind, exercising your consciousness. Yeah. So I used to work with um, kids with uh, autism and ADHD. And basically, one of the most revolutionary therapies I learned about um, is basically instituting mindfulness for these kids. Mm -hmm. Exercises that, that in, in increase their focus on their, their proprioception, their body awareness, mm -hmm. and their you know, emotional level, depending on what their level of uh, you know, severity of their um, illness is. Mm -hmm. But basically, it's something that we all have. There's a, there's a part of our brain we're all um, a little bit ADHD. We all get distracted. We all can go into this. We can all let emotions possess us in a way. And I just thought this was an interesting example because for these kids who are who process the world so much differently than we do, the same principle applies. There's a part of the brain that helps you basically be in the witness of everything that's happening. There's an actual like circuit in your brain that directs everything. And it's, it's basically what, what you strengthen when you meditate. Mm -hmm. It's this part of the brain that is, that is you're, you're sort of in the captain's chair. Mm -hmm. You can see when the emotion comes. You can see when the habit comes. You can see. And then you decide to respond instead of react. Mm -hmm. It's not running you. So would you say that in that moment you are dissociating from your ego self and associating yourself 
uh, with the witness self. Sure, you're you're kind of stepping back. You're zooming out a little bit. Yeah. To something that's always there. Right. And this interesting thing is that ego, when you're in the ego, it cannot see itself, right? Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, you have a blind spot. You have usually, a blind spot. Because you're really identified yeah. with a pattern. Yeah. You're like, oh shit. You I, think I, you I, are that pattern. You think you are the pattern, but right. you're not the pattern. You're not the pattern. You're not the pattern. The pattern is a part of you that is learned to protect itself. That's great advice. Yeah. So uh, the lesson is there that we're not who, you, who we think we are a lot of times. Right. And then that we have that space in our mind where we, we can associate with a different part of ourselves and be that. Yes. And make decisions from that, from that place. Okay. You can basically, you can understand why these things have been running your life so far and you can begin to consciously rewrite them mm -hmm. you can you you can use conscious languaging patterns throughout your life to begin to rewrite these these beliefs that you have that tell you oh you know i'm i'm i like guitar but i suck at guitar okay so you know what i mean yeah i like guitar but i suck so but by getting to that point then you have more accurate view of the world yeah. and you are much more honest with yourself and what you're capable of yeah so then we're going back to this advice of spending whatever free time you have meditating mm -hmm. will bring you into having confidence pursuing your soul purpose yeah because uh at first and still to this day all of us we have um addictions to our emotions like physically, mm. neurologically, when we have a built, when we have a pattern of response in our lives, our body is going to reinforce the habit that it's most familiar with. So when you sit in meditation for a long enough time, you can begin to rewrite the the wiring in your brain that tells that that basically tells the body how it's going to respond to mm. situations. So the longer you sit, identified with your your witness consciousness you're you're who you really are i like that yeah the quitting addiction to ego yes quitting your addiction to your ego because yeah, otherwise ego loves emotions it just bask in all sorts of suffering and pain yeah 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 it makes no sense but that's what ego loves to do yeah exactly and and then sometimes it feels good to be addicted to those emotions oh i love that you mentioned that it yeah. feels good to be a victim it can. It feels bad, but it also feels good sometimes. Like, let's just address this little issue that yeah. it is possible, yeah. you know, possible, that uh, uh, we as humans may be addicted to our struggles. That For sure. There is some sort of reward there by playing yeah. a victim card. There is an instant gratification reward by, for example, uh, whining and complaining and, and venting. Totally. There is an instant gratification reward. And that only uh, in reinforce the, wor uh, the, the worldview of a, of a victim. Yeah. Whereas meditation is the other way to deal with that. Of course. So I could just uh, go and whine and complain to my friend. And my friend's yeah. going to say, oh, yeah, of course you're right. You, you're, you're, you deserve to, to, you know, quote, unquote, yeah. suffer. Because, you know, you sound right. And I'm your friend and I'm going to support your suffering. Of course, yeah. But there's another side of the coin where, you, where of the we, coin. instead of going to the friend, we go inside and we meditate and we find that point of awareness of a witness. Something that's really important here is to realize that we always have the choice. You know, we always have the choice. Do we want to play the victim game, mm -hmm. right? Do we want to allow ourselves to um, be identified with that? Because... Mm -hmm. I mean, until we step into the seat of meditation and self-awareness, we, we don't know why we're addicted to that. Yeah. Um, and we, we know that it feels good, but we don't know why it feels good. Right. And we also don't know what is the cost benefit of staying there. Yeah. But when you, when you step out of that, you can say, okay, I get why I like this, but there's a, there's a big world out there yeah. that, that of possibility when I'm not putting my energy mm -hmm into the things that are that are self-soothing and self-comforting. I'm now putting my energy into what I actually want. I love it. Out of so uh, to summarize that, if we are in the victim role, yeah. by definition, we're not in a hero's journey. 
Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love it. And then if we are in the victim role, uh, the first order of business yeah. is to ask yourself, am I being uh, a hero in this movie? Yeah. Well, are and you? Then, on, am yeah. I being a victim? Is that a good question to ask? It is. It is a good question we can ask. Um, and I think it all comes back to you know, are you when you have that emotion or that addiction, that that feeling that you want to just vent to somebody and and go and and get that advice or or you know whatever it is that whatever emotion you're addicted to, the the feeling of lack, the feeling of um, insecurity or your depression, you wanna you wanna talk yourself out of doing something. Mm. Um, ask yourself in that moment, like, am I feeling this? And then am I moving through it? Like, am I feeling this with self-awareness so that I can master it? Or am I just letting it sweep me off my feet? Okay. Because so, okay, if you, it's it. okay to be in those emotions, we all will face these things throughout our lives. Yeah. But when you face them, what do you do with it? Okay. Know? I love it. All right. So we brought ourselves uh, from this uh, nine to five um stuck in a job yeah situation and uh, wanting to do something much more in life having that burning passion inside of us um we learned that the best step is to start meditating we learned that uh, after we start meditating we're going to be dealing with our ego in a different way rather totally. reinforcing it we're going yeah. to be dismantling it yeah okay and now we're arrived to the subject of emotions. Okay. Let's talk okay. about emotions. All right. So what do you what do you have to say about emotions? And for example, um, what would emotions tell me? Or how can emotions help me to navigate this yeah. uh, hero's journey? That's a great question. <clears throat> because emotions, um, they're energy in motion, right? And they're going to take us somewhere if we go on there on there if, if we choose to follow mm -hmm. and if we're feeling a an uncomfortable emotion is usually a, a a sign of one of two things either it's it's coming from our higher intuition about something that discomfort that sort of tickle feeling mm -hmm. it's it's like oh you know don't don't trust this person just now you know mm -hmm. you, you you would come back to yourself and 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 trust you know there's that kind of emotion. I wouldn't. I don't even know if I call that emotion, but right. there's that kind of sensation. And then there's the one where you just you feel like you're pulled into this like pattern of um, fear or okay. or or whatever it is. And so, so what can our emotions show us? Mm -hmm. Our emotions are are like little signals okay. to to whether to they're signaling to us. They're like going hey 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 hey. They're grabbing for our attention, and we can we have to just look at them. We have to face them and see where are they coming from. Are they, are they, our old patterns trying to suck us back in, or is it a sign from our from ourself? Like in the same way that if you have your hand on the stove, it's sending you a signal. Hey, take your hand off the stove. Mm -hmm. It can be a signal of where you want to go next and okay. and and where what you need to be doing. Okay, so if I'm experiencing negative emotion, mm -hmm. uh, which means that there's somewhere I may not be on my path. Right. Or it may be that is an emotion of fear that needs to be faced because this is what I really want to talk about. Yeah. Because there's two ways. Uh, I don't think we can grow without the pain. Of course not. Okay. Yeah. We cannot. And uh, we experience pain when we suffer. Now, how do you know... Yes which one to accept and process through, which one to deny? How do you know this is a pain of the suffering or is it a pain of the growth? I think it's just a trial and error process, you know, because you can tell when your pain is almost like injuring yourself, you know, and by, by injuring yourself, I just mean your pain is, is a drain versus more, it's like a pain of growth, mm -hmm. you know, are you, you know, it's, it's like if you think about when you're working out, are you building muscle with this pain mm -hmm. or are you just putting all your energy into something that's taking your energy away? Okay. You know, are you being efficient with your pain? That's one, that's one thing to think about. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um, are you resisting the pain because you're afraid of what's on the other side? Or ah. are you facing the pain um, because you know that that's the hero's dream? 
You okay. Know, All right. So sometimes I can go through life on my hero's journey and there will be an, an, a point of fear or, or pain, if you will. Right. And that will be the indication for me to overcome it. Yeah. Okay. So that is the hero's journey type of pain. Yes. Where it's um, a part of us that perhaps from the trauma from the childhood or some karmic, uh, you know, inheritance or whatnot. Yeah. But there's a part of us that is disorganized. And as we go through the hero's journey, we're facing that. And we, how do we face that? By interacting with other people and having these emotions triggered. Yeah. And then we look in and then we see, okay, I experienced this emotion. And now I can blame other people. But every time I point the finger at somebody else, it's three pointing back. Yeah. So that tells us that that person just showed something about ourselves. Oh, yeah. And uh, which means that if that person did show us something about ourselves, then um, that's the hero's journey type of pain to overcome. And uh, so I just want for the listeners to understand that hero's journey does not mean a constant bliss. What the hero's journey means is the constant challenge and the bliss behind it. Mm -hmm. Like, um, like for example, I've been uh, through uh, the this little hero's journey uh, in my relationship, right? Yeah. And and uh, it's been a very challenging relationship. But I did not. Uh, I have never grown as as much as I have. And I've never found out as much about myself as facing these challenges. Totally. And I can tell from my experience that these challenges, when they come up and they take you, and that that, yeah. that emotion, that energy, you lose yourself in it. You, you identify with it. And sometimes it takes so, so much to step out of it, do some breathing, do some meditation, and, and find the, that inner space where you can process that pain and it just goes away. And then you can, uh, once you do that, then you can interact uh, with your uh, partner from a different point of view and heal that yeah. challenge, that pain that showed up. And I can attest that, that after that, you feel blissful, you feel high, you feel like falling in love again and yeah. again and again. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like you're never just going to master life. You know, the way, the way the life works, I think, is cycles of bliss and then a new lesson. You know, like you, you have a challenge or you have a desire. You want to go somewhere in life. You want to accomplish something. And life is going to, and other people, like, like in this challenge, the, the, the relationship challenge. You want, you want to experience love with this mm -hmm. person, right? Yeah. And in that kind of love, that they're going to bring up every block love mm -hmm. everything inside of you that resists what it means to love fully mm -hmm. is going to be thrown in your face yeah. and you're gonna you're gonna get caught off guard yeah. it's a bigger and bigger wave you're gonna fall off the surfboard but the important thing is is knowing now you know how to get back on the surfboard yeah. you're not phased by it learning how to get back on the surfboard yeah okay yeah and 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 yeah because you have that self-understanding you're not so it's still going to hurt. There's always going to be pain. But you've framed the pain now so that you know that this is this is a process of that has huge rewards. Mm -hmm. So now when 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 you fall off the surfboard, you know what it feels like to catch that pipeline. So you're going to you're going to get back on. You know that rush, that bliss. You know the purpose of why you fall off the surfboard. And yeah. so you can build your your balance and your leg muscles for that bigger bigger and bigger wave. Absolutely. I'm getting chills. Yeah. Which means it's true. Which, which means you're not lying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So that's, uh, that's fantastic. All right. So we figured out that uh, there is a growing pain which yeah. hides the bliss behind it. Mm -hmm. And then life is about cycles, that there's going to be a challenge, pain, bliss, challenge, pain, bliss. Yeah. And um, uh, would you say that's sort of like invitation to um, start enjoying that type of pain? Not a pain totally. of suffering, but the pain of growth. Yeah. So this is, I think, the we've come upon the main difference between the two types of pain. 
because the pain of suffering is a signal to take your, you know, that's a signal to say, oh, hold on, take a step back, change something, or, or just witness this. Like literally, if the emotion is consuming you that much, um, you just have to sit yourself down sometimes and have that conversation with yourself, which is what meditation really is. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's you interfacing with yourself. And um, the other type of pain is the pain of climbing up a mountain. Mm -hmm. You know, your legs are getting sore, but you're going to get to the mountaintop. Right. You know, so it's it's the difference between a progress pain mm -hmm. and pain that is unavoidable because there's always pain in life. Yeah. And the the suffering of being caught up okay. on one of the steps. So to summarize, the advice I believe would be uh, find out where is the growing pain and what pain you, you're supposed to uh, face and process through. And yeah. which is obviously the, when I say pain, I mean also the fears as well, which the, the pain is a, a form of fear. A pain, mm -hmm. the way I see pain is that emotional pain, especially, I believe is very tangible. Uh, uh, it's, um, it's almost like physical pain when we're experiencing yeah. And uh, it's that energy emotion, energy in motion flowing through you, but uh, uh, flowing through a certain disorganized belief, disorganized thought form that is there sitting there, and we call the shadow, right? Because we're not yeah. aware of it. Yeah. And once that energy of love, it could be love flowing through that, mm -hmm. and that disorganized uh, part of us makes that energy vibrate at the emotion of fear and tension and that's the emotional pain yeah which means that there is a, a, a part of us that needs to be reorganized this yeah. is the way i imagine yeah, yeah i agree i have a similar way of organizing it. there's like this part of you which at first you identify with <laughs> Yeah, because it's my armpits now. I'm going to be like this just to make sure that viewers don't see my uh, fluids leaking from my armpits. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just sweating. I mean, it's hot in here. It's getting intense so in here. Give me a break. We're getting really deep into this this, this process, man. It's it's work. We're working. It so, is. It so is. what were we saying? We're saying... Um, oh, we were talking about... Uh, the visualizing oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the pain. And yeah, yeah. So, so, so how do you interact with yourself? You know, is, it, is this a demon? You know, is this something scary? Or is this just, just a part of you? Okay, I love it. You know? Go on. Because if it's, because if you frame it as like, oh my God, it's this like ugly, disgusting, trapped thing in my body. Mm -hmm. Or this emotion, this anxiety that will just never leave me. Ah, I'm, plagued by anxiety which is how it can feel that can be how it feels mm. but if you frame it as like oh actually this is like circuit in my body that wants something it wants that love it, it, wants, the it, love, it, it yeah. wants the love didn't get whenever it was formed Absolutely. to protect you and, and allow you to survive so if you're able to frame it in that way all you need to do is sit with it and figure out what it really needs you know come back to that love come back to seeing how it's it's running in circles trying to get a love but the love's up here you know so yeah. just you just say it's okay it's okay and and just by witnessing it just by sitting with it just mm -hmm. by being with it mm -hmm. it's gonna release it's gonna start to blossom okay. really uh so let me share a little bit how i deal with that sure let's yeah. talk about that yeah so whenever i'm experiencing uh like emotion that just consumes me yeah and uh, i'm a passionate guy i mean for sure it's sometimes i get lost in it you know the first order of business for me is to dis disidentify from it yeah and uh, a second order order of business is um which i'm still uh struggling is not to act from it yeah like because any action in the moment of emotional pain will propagate the hurt yeah so by being a responsible human being it's best again i'm just working on that right now sort of halfway there yeah. is uh to stop communicating while i am in that state mm -hmm. and when i stop communicating while i'm in that state 
this obviously uh, uh, prevents any further uh, hurt. Mm. And then I go do some breathing and I find that center inside of me. And sometimes it takes a while while having that emotion to move to that witness awareness state. Yeah. But the moment I move to the awareness, that present moment state, the emotion that I was feeling now suddenly starts dissipating, mm -hmm. like going away. Yeah. And uh, once it's fully processed, once I fully let go, then I have a, a pleasant surprise of the feelings of compassion and love just flooding m my mind. Yeah. And I feel a, a love and compassion for that pain, for that thought, belief, whatever we want to call it. Mm -hmm. And um, healing with my own center, with yeah. my own love that I find inside. Yeah. Yeah. So this, so is, this is how I roll with that. It's a process of integration, you know, and some people call it the soul retrieval. It's a, it's, it's a part of you that wants to come back to you mm -hmm. so that you as your your yourself you know like you're 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 now you're in the captain's chair again you know that that energy that's been trapped in that circuit it dissipated and then you got that love that rush of love because now that's that's a clean circuit you know you're you're it's a clean circuit you're like now. this now instead yeah. of just like this you're aligned now yeah 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 okay yeah. i love what you showed there so instead of energy flowing through me yeah when I'm in pain, it's sort of resonating in one place. Yeah, and get, that's what the tension is, and that's right. what the pain is. You get rumination. It's trapped energy. Yeah, you you get you get anxiety, you get rumination, you get fixation on something. Like yeah. uh, I, the the only solution is this, or I need this to happen for to be happy. Yeah. When really it's like, there's another way. There's a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And the one that you're so focused on is is something that you can you can abstract from. Okay, I love it. Okay, yeah. so the solution is love. Yeah, accurate. Simply put, yeah. Okay, and uh, the source of love can be from within. Yes, and it can be from a person you love. Sure. And uh, so that goes back to uh, two ways of healing that pain. And two ways of permanently changing yourself. Yes. It's receiving that love about that um, belief, thought form, or whatever you have about yourself from another person. Yeah. Which is, that's what that's why it works in the relationship. Right. Or you can do it yourself by finding, uh, yes. you know, the love within. It depends because some people may not be at the point where we can reach the state of consciousness where it's just like full of love. Mm -hmm. And um, that's been the process in my life too. And only lately yeah. um, experience that more often, often, and more and more easy. Um, but if person is not able to access that, there's always a partner that, that, especially the partner that you love the most, yeah, has the capacity. That person actually has the capacity to hurt you the most, but it has the capacity to, to heal you the most as well. Yeah, that's the paradox I've noticed. Well, I think if a person really loves you, they're not afraid of your triggers, and they know how to call light to something that's going to help you grow mm -hmm. without it destroying you or consuming you. Okay. You know, they know how to push buttons a little bit because they know you and they can see. It's like that diagram yeah. with the self and the soul that you right. were talking about. But anyways, like you, you, you can see their trauma and, and, and they can see yours mm -hmm. and you help each other see them in a, in a pace that, that is a, a pace of progress. It's not a pace of I'm just going to fix myself all at once or perfect myself because that doesn't work. It doesn't yeah. work, no. You can't, you can't just just shortcut this it's stuff. It's like peeling the onion. Yeah, you got to peel the onion. You can't just slice into the onion and get take the take the core and then just toss the onion. It's right. not. Well, um, I mean, you can try. I mean... There, there is this concept of escaping your karmic cycle, which, which means that... Uh, um, yeah. That's you're else, you're yeah. skipping uh, the the game that you're meant to be playing. So I don't know if that's ideal because then uh, you are missing point of the hero's journey. You're essentially just load up the last level. But I wouldn't. I mean, I've seen people and I've heard people talking about it. Um, how they uh, did just that instead of um, 
dealing with the karmic pain one by one, which is the hero's yeah. journey, they loaded the last level, boom, and they were there. And that is possible to do that. This is something that there's a dark side to this, and then there's there's ways of doing this healthily, right. I think. Um, and for a lot of us, I think there's these upper level games, there's these upper, le upper level states of consciousness that if we climb the mountain and get there, it's beautiful and, and you earned it and you deserve it. And mm -hmm. you, you know, you don't have to struggle, struggle, struggle to get there necessarily. I don't think it's always like that. Sometimes you allow yourself to slip into that. Or like you said, somehow you boot up this level. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, there's almost a way of escaping into expansion. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a way to escape into higher consciousness mm -hmm. that prevents us from facing that that what's in the basement you know you can clean the attic and everything and you never spend any time in your basement and it's yeah. there's still a bunch of junk there yeah. you know so so there's a steady path up that mountain and then there's like you know like for example if you if you take a psychedelic you might have a really expanded you take a psychedelic sure yeah <laughs> if, you, if you do yeah. take a psych you you get an expanded psychedelics in, in the house uh, no, who knows who knows illicit substances would never so there's a there's the view from the airplane it's like you're going up into an airplane and you can see this this beautiful landscape for an hour oh. well for nine hours or whatever you're you're taking a flight and then you touch ground and you're like well that was cool i saw the mountain i think i get it or whatever or you go you, you go on another flight and you see the top of the mountain but you're not actually on the top of the mountain you're not, you saw it you saw it but you didn't you didn't build a staircase where okay, you can walk up fantastic. and down fantastic i love it i love it yeah this, like you touched the subject now let's unravel this a little bit more because we talked about from the beginning from nine to five now to dealing with your emotional pain yeah how you used it for growing and finding bliss yeah and um now we came to the subject of psychedelics and uh, I take psychedelics and I view them like, of course, there's all sorts of uh, forms of them. But primarily when it comes to hero's journey uh, story and when it comes to, comp you know, in the context of hero's journey, I see them as an opportunity to face the ordeal or um dive into abyss so to speak or face your fear it's the part of the hero's journey that allows us to face our fear yeah it can be it can be if so you that, okay use it that way yeah. okay so there's but people call that a bad trip i want to talk about that and i want to dispel yeah. that myth about the bad trip and sure. what is actually going on there Okay, so you have this fragmented part of your psyche when you have a bad trip because everything that you're experiencing that it's coming from you, and and I mean, you can get really philosophical with this, but really, basically, you're facing that shadow, that demon, that that demon, which is not really a demon; it's a fragmented part of you. Oh my God, yes. So you get presented. You might, if you have a lot of. Uh, shadow work to do if your basement's really dirty you're gonna take that plunge and whatever energy you interface with the demon with if you come at that demon with a lot of fear the environment is going to be really fearful you yeah. know it's gonna fill with that charge okay and so this is like putting your emotional work on expert mode okay you know because it because mm -hmm. it's so vivid and so so clear but but really this is a principle that applies to all of life Okay. Because when you when you try to resist it in the rest of your life, all right, it's the same thing that happens. Fantastic. All right. So let's talk about this specific thing. So we talked about how we can go through this pain and deal with it just in a normal environment. Yeah. Right. And that fear. And we okay. I mean, that's what the demon is. That's what the devil is. I mean, myth like mythologically speaking or religiously speaking, that's what the devil is. Devil is the ego. Is that force that keeps us in the ego, in the suffering, yeah. and so on? Yeah, and has uh, only the temporary rewards and no permanence. So, a lot of times when we're, I mean, the movie Exorcist, kind of famous movie, right? And uh, 
that's essentially a um, an illustration of somebody who has these parts of themselves that are yeah in pain suffering and then we can call them demons we can call yeah. them demons if you like totally so these parts are there and sometimes they can show up and you have the all sorts of myths like they don't like the light and so on uh, and it's almost like when you shine the light upon yourself i want to shine the light upon the part of you that is pain and and yeah. suffering and and that beliefs and and thought forms that causes uh you to sometimes take the part of that little demon right when we take psychedelic all of that is right in in front of our face yeah there is nowhere to hide it's sometimes a hard bit to swallow to understand i'm a good human being and to find <laughs> all these demons down inside that was all suppressed throughout the years and never been yeah. looked at yeah it can be that way it totally can so this interesting question that comes up in my mind is like, I think of the demon as like a trapped energy. So it's like, and also something that has use. It has use and value in your life to understand. Mm -hmm. So if you befriend that demon, so to speak, you're, you avoid, um, or, or really you, you're, you're learning to master that part of yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're coming into that shadow you're not afraid of it if you really can overcome the fear because this is this is the emotion that you have to lean into mm -hmm. you have to do work and intention to actually face these things right you can't just expect it to always just come up into your life you have, okay. you have to be seeking not necessarily seeking but you have to be unafraid of doing that work when it comes up understanding yeah of what that is yeah and not being afraid of your own demon sure because you get it now you get right. it that it's that it's you you know, this is a part of you. Mm -hmm. And then when you get that, you're, you, you know, that part of yourself, you know, that, that, that who you are in, like, let's say you have an anger, a demon of anger, right? Like you, you just anger, you get carried away. You can't control your, um, that, that side of you, which is really a side of you that wants to impose its own boundaries mm -hmm. side yeah. of you that wants yeah. to impose its own will. Mm -hmm. If you repress that, you'll just, you'll go around being, You'll be like, oh, I don't want to get angry. I don't want to get angry. And, and, and you'll get taken advantage of. Yeah. But if you can master that demon, then that demon becomes a superpower. Because then it. you can use, not necessarily anger, but you can use your will now in an appropriate way. You're not afraid to stand up for yourself, but you still are not harming other people when you do it. So just like we talked at the beginning of yeah. having that disorganized uh, belief, thought form, or that disorganized information, yeah, which we can call a demon. Now let's talk about. Uh, now we're talking about the psychedelic experience, which essentially is the the sum of all of those little fears and pain bodies that we have. Yeah. Right. And uh, by what you, when you're saying is by confronting and not being afraid of that part of us. Which, by the yeah. way, let's just be very real in the dream world. Right, this which is uh, you know you can call it fourth dimension, which is a dream world, and that's it, it, it exists. Those demons can be visualized, or th those parts of us, those ego parts of us that are so you know painful and destructive, can be experienced as actual monsters. Yeah, if you have a nightmare, if you have, okay. uh, uh, or whatever. you're doing conscious shadow work, okay. you know. Okay, so now. Now that we know that over there, uh, th these nightmares that I'm having or these, these um, bad trips that I'm having is actually an opportunity for me to face my demon. Yeah. And um, one thing I would, I would like to add is that sending love to that demon or yeah. demon, monster, whatever you want to call and not fighting it. The more you fight that, the more it's, it's stronger it gets. Isn't that true? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it's, I want to uh, shift this metaphor here because I think there's another way of looking at this is really powerful. If you, it's, it's like software, you know, if Absolutely. You, you, when you meditate or you have a psychedelic experience or you do dream, whatever, when you enter these different theta states or states of awareness where you can clearly see you're, you're taking a step back, you're, 
going into developer mode you can see you can see what's not working you can see these part of you that that um are tripping up they have little bugs right you know and and then you can you can see what is it that that needs it just needs a little tweak it just needs a little love mm -hmm. it just needs a little um bridge really to get yeah. from a to b yeah. then you're doing a, a you're you're taking ownership you're you're taking authorship of of your of your story of your and, and now of, of your, programs. your programs yeah, yeah so to speak yeah so you mentioned a different uh, point of view which is yeah we are exact we are describing exact same thing but we're describing from different metaphor which is programming metaphor which one which by the way i like and i love and this is the way i'm experiencing the world is through yeah. the metaphor of the computers digital consciousness yeah and um, but not everybody is going to experience this way yeah. some people are going to be experiencing demons religious you know things some people are going to be experiencing as a monsters and and whatnot um, and so on and so on. There's many different uh, experiences of the same concept that we're talking about, right? For sure. Yeah. So it it's whatever is most helpful to you. You know, if you have a um, a pantheon that works for you, you have all these um, archetypes because that's what they really are. You know, they're images, symbols that that have power for us. Mm -hmm. If you if it's helpful for you to look at it as a demon that you're facing that's your that's that's your way on the hero's journey mm -hmm. that's your design that's you designing that journey in the way that you're going to most effectively encounter it you know but if you if you like computer programming okay. you might or if you're an author you know it's like you're thinking about uh, rewriting my life or i'm reprogramming my life or whatever there's a lot of ways to look at it yeah you know whatever your worldview is you know the symbols that have the power for you exactly and it's the same energies that are moving through it's Absolutely. the same path same story progress same story i would like to invite everybody to realize that that yeah. a lot of times we're arguing about when we experiencing the same stuff through the different metaphor yeah that totally. there's no need to argue that uh, uh we are talking essentially about the same stuff same story same mythology same principles it's all the same we're all sharing the hero's journey yeah and whether mine is could be very different from yours, but the principles underneath it all, all the same. Yeah. That's what uh, going back to the book uh, "Hero with Thousand Faces" by Joseph Campbell, yeah. and uh, he discovered that when he traveled throughout the world, he realized that um, some people that have never met each other, never met each other, some of these indigenous tribes and whatnot have a common mythology going through their um yeah. psyche and says yeah. well if they wouldn't they're not if it's not cultural what is it and of course he figured out that it is spiritual it's something that we come wired with definitely i think part of this is is just evolution you know the snake means something to us the the bird means something to us because they're strong symbols it's you know symbol, yeah. we have strong associations to these things so and yet at the same time we all have our individual especially in a culture like ours where there is a lot of media thrown at us and there's a lot of different ways to capture these images yeah. based on our really varied life experiences we each have our own inner representation our own little model built from the group of symbols that are that are so and so the the reason that's important the reason that's important is because when someone else is on their journey what's most helpful when you're interfacing with them is being able to see from their model oh my god yes because if you can see what their story is then you guys are working on the same playing field there is there is there is a moment of vibing at the same frequency and that's what yeah. we call um friendship love yeah it's actually uh, seeing from another p person's perspective and recognizing that person lives the same story yeah and that's the resonance that's when you're like oh we're actually these uh you know when you see the hero journey movies there you have these uh, uh friends that go along the way and then you have these little camps when and then there's a journey ahead and so on and then you talk and have this little campfire going on and you share and then you connect and this is life this is uh, how yeah. we can experience
Yeah. Well, well, if if I'm able to have that kind of empathy, that kind of um, attentiveness to your life view, I can stop going on about my, you know, my archetypes, my angels and demons, okay. and I can start speaking in your language. Mm -hmm. And by speaking in your language, now we're co-authoring this story together instead of being in two separate worlds. Okay. You know. So there's uh, many ways of learning, and one of them is taking perspectives. Yeah. It's actually uh, just being curious about other person's journey and learning from, from that, how they were so, dealing with that. And uh, especially if somebody has been through the journey, then you ask a bunch of questions and you find out the answers. And, and it's like, well, and the next time you have a challenge, it's like, oh, it's a little bit like that. Much yeah, to deal with. one of the the wisest things that anyone's ever said to me is, is you can you can learn from other people's mistakes. You have to you have to go down and make that mistake no. yourself. And it it sounds really simple, but really in effect, it's it's powerful because because that's one of the I think one of the most important paths to progress in your life and a path to clarity is being able to trust someone when they tell you. A myth or a story about something they've experienced and you don't have to trust it to the point where you don't ever experiment with yourself but still if you can get the the the, the theme the I'll archetype the story you can avoid a lot of suffering for yourself okay and you can recognize when something is coming away uh, so let's talk about this dynamic now because I think it's very important there is something that is required for that to happen and that the the not a being in your ego like yeah. for example i don't think it's possible to learn anything from someone without suspending your disbelief without being the yeah. without having the open-minded skepticism yeah and uh, that's also a state of mind and that is outside of ego totally. um, and it is also a form of surrender if you find somebody who is like you say you know a wise man or, or a guide the best thing to do is to suspend your disbelief and uh, uh, go on that journey, surrender to that journey. Yeah, I mean, and then you acquire all the lessons uh, from there. And yeah. then your hero's journey becomes much, much easy. It's a little bit like playing a video game and then getting uh, playing blind and then getting some guidance. And saying like, oh, if you cast this spell, this is what's going to happen. If you don't know how much trial and error you're going to have to do to figure that out. Lots of time, lots of pain. But if somebody shows you, now you're playing that video game and you're acing it. So yeah. you, you're getting a little bit, you're getting the, the balance between the challenge and um, enjoyment. Right? When the challenge is a little bit too high, then you don't want to play. Totally. And then you get into depression. When yeah. the challenge is a little too low... You get bored. So that's why sometimes getting too good of advice or too much of an advice can make this life yeah. a little boring because then you just jump through 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 steps. And well, uh, So a little bit of advice with your own trial and error, I think it's a great balance. So this, this brings us all the way back to the beginning. Um, we were talking about, uh, well, what I want to mention is the suspension of disbelief, mm -hmm. right? Because you can, you can know the, the cheat code to the game. You can know the ending to the book. It's possible. Right? You can you can kind of, you know, if you're looking at life that way, you're not going to have as much fun. Exactly. You know, because if you can suspend your disbelief and say, what, is this, what does this have to show me? Instead of trying to analyze it and, and beat it to death with how much you think you know about it. Yeah. Then you're going to learn a new way to play that same level. Yeah. Or, that's, or it's going to become a new adventure for you yeah that's crucial and that person who you don't have to totally play their game or totally buy into their story but you're still like you're still reading it you're kind of like okay where's this going this is kind of interesting maybe yeah I'm gonna learn something from this guy yeah and 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 you you really we, we have something to learn from everyone when we're absolutely grounded, when we're grounding our soul versus our ego every single moment in person can teach us something absolutely and that is why we have in our hero's journey all these wise men every hero's journey you 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 see yoda you know <laughs> gandalf yeah. you name it yeah. there's a lot of these uh, figures that are there to play their role and there is no uh, hero's journey without them 
which means to take home message is have mentors. Yeah, have mentors. Um, be be unafraid of 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 and be humble enough to work with people who have been through what you're what you're about to go through, and like let them guide you into the cave. Say, okay, when you get into the cave, you're gonna see this, this, and this, and you can deal with it this way or this way. You know, people people really do have experience what you're going through, yeah. and trusting the life that people that life will present you with mentors that can actually help you right go into the cave so that when you go into the cave you can come out with a sense of success you can come out with a sense of like okay i didn't just wander around and trip over and then give up and come back i went to the cave i did the hard thing and i came back and now I'm more powerful now i have more direction clarity whatever integration of the shadow so with a little bit of guidance a the bad guidance. trip becomes yeah. the most blissful thing that you can ever experience yeah I love it. Yeah. And I believe this is true. I think that that is why a lot of people are experimenting with psychedelics, but they do not have the guidance. They do not understand what they are facing there. And they believe that whatever they believe, but they do not have enough guidance uh, to get the most out of it. Uh, you can take psychedelic and you can on, only like traumatize yourself and quote unquote have a big a bad trip. But if you have guidance, uh, you will understand that bad trip as an opportunity to grow and transcend uh, yourself, your ego, uh, conquer your dragon, so to speak. And uh, then you come back from that trip and it is a tennis trip and you have faced a lot, but now you're sitting with this unbelievable bliss inside of you and you just unloaded this huge load off your shoulders yeah. and now you can breathe, you can be excited again. Yeah, and even beyond that, like what psychedelics are showing you is how to make that process an everyday process. Because yeah. if you really learn from psychedelics, you can understand it or, or, or meditating. Because it's not about, you know, as you go through your life, you're not always going to be like, okay, I need to go meditate. And then you just run off and then you mm -hmm. sit down and do the breathing. Sometimes you have the room to do that. But in some situations, it's about the pattern that gets ingrained in you. It's about this self-trust and this way of responding to things mm -hmm. that over time becomes your new muscle memory. Right. Even with psychedelics, you're on that path. You 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 you're on the surfboard now, mm -hmm. you, you, and you have a lot of skilled and built-in tools to use. Right. Instead of always having to put on the training wheels of psychedelics or go into your room and meditate. Okay. Like you, you, Let's you, talk about that for a little bit. Yeah. Shall we? Yeah. How much time do we have? Oh, we don't have a lot of time. It's okay. Well, let's talk about uh, psychedelics and uh, there is a uh, constructive use of it and destructive use of it. Yeah. And I want to talk a little bit about cannabis use. Sure. And um, because I believe cannabis can be very healing, but can also be very damaging. And, um, you know, um, I have experienced myself and I've seen in other people is that if you use cannabis to pacify your pain rather than uh, processing yeah. and, uh, and actually getting rid of it, but just suppressing it and pacifying and you use um, weed because of that. And uh, you may just like have a little bit of like, oh, I feel down and then you smoke weed. Then you're going to pacify it. You're going to feel better. But in that moment, what you're going to do is every time you use weed to relax your mind, yeah. um, it's done through the exogenous, if you will, uh, THC cannabinoid, right? And that will automatically, next time you don't smoke weed, will pre prevent you from getting into that relaxed mind state naturally because that's the release of natural, uh, you know, endocannabinoids. Yeah. It will prevent you from getting, so that's, that's why uh, smoking weed in a such way is going to be counterproductive and sort of backwards. But there's another way to smoke weed, and that is consciously with intent and meditation. And for the purpose, not because you feel bad, but because you feel great, you're ready to have a great meditation Mm -hmm. And uh, you need a little bit of help to relax your thoughts, relax your mind, and you smoke that weed. 
and you meditate. And that will allow you to access the states of consciousness that will be much easier to access them later naturally. And then once you access that, these states of consciousness naturally, you can get high on your own supply. And that's the trick. Yeah. And cannabis can lead you there, but it's not to be uh, reliant upon. It's to open the doors for you so then you can get high on your own supply. And you can. I mean, totally. I'm high a little bit right now. I am too. Did not smoke weed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm grateful for myself. I never understood how you could, because just personally, I never understood I could use cannabis to suppress or, or feel uh an avoidant of emotions because for me personally it always just took me into that space of facing the shadows mm -hmm. and i was just like what, what am i i can't yeah i can go sit and meditate oh, you know I so i that. never could even enjoy cannabis in a not serious way mm -hmm. so i was always like okay i get that this is this is a serious deal to the point where i genuinely just feel like i i, I get more out of life when i'm not stoned because you realize that it's a process it's not the external thing so you know the weed I mean? paranoia is also an opportunity to face your shadow. Is it not right? Absolutely. Be I had uh, uh, I had the experience like that. Yeah. Yeah. I had the experience like that when I uh, smoked it for the purpose of relieving that, and it just of exacerbated. That's exactly what I'm talking about. It's just gonna put. It's just gonna show you exactly what you're trying to avoid. Yeah. And so that's why I was just like, well, I'm just gonna short circuit this process, not smoke weed, yeah. learn how to get in touch with my emotions, yeah. learn how to actually generate that bliss from within and get that natural relaxation without anything outside of myself. Right. Because then, then you're really able to trigger that, right. that, that, that neural response because you yeah. built it. You built those muscles yourself. Yeah. Which, by the way, at that time when it happened, I already had the experience of how to process the fear. Yeah. So I dealt with it and I felt really good right after. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And um, also just a, uh, like a, I don't know, I, mean, I can't give advice, but something to say about cannabis is that if you're smoking cannabis for the pur for the purpose of uh, deepening your meditation, uh, then the the natural uh, THC and CBD, uh, you know, natural CBD and THC content is the way to go. It's not the way that just been bred to have like incredible amounts of th THC and no CBD to get you high. Not that weed. This is not to. This gonna help. It's not gonna help you. It's actually it's going to make you uh, go more like in the delta states and not remember stuff, you know. Yeah. And uh, but if you smoke the one with the CBD, that is naturally grown and it's actually like a natural cannabis, not uh, bred to be a, a crazy, um, you know, eye popping cannabis, <laughs> then then you'll have a great experience, uh, enhancing your meditation purpose. And then once you get to that point, then you can meditate for for the purpose of getting high, and it works. Yeah. Well, either way, you don't want to shock your system. You know, whether you're doing this shadow work, uh, however you're doing it, I, I I feel like this comes back to a way to wrap up this hero journey really beautifully, mm -hmm. because you don't have to drown in shadows to get pro to get progress mm -hmm. to to learn these lessons. You don't have to stay in the basement all the time. Mm -hmm. You're gonna come out of the basement and you're gonna have a great time afterwards. You're gonna have that bliss. Right. You don't have to be so lost in perfecting yourself because you're never gonna perfect yourself. It's just like a 4% window, I think. You just gotta push yourself out of your comfort zone, like 4% or, okay. or five, just that little bit. That's, that's the way where you actually start to grow. Well, uh, absolutely. I look at it as this way. I mean, I mean, just a suggestion of how to look at it. Yeah. So imagine this capacity, these shadows that we have inside, right? Let's yeah. say you have a bunch of them and, you know, you can imagine them any way you want, but it's like a bunch of them, right? Like a big blob of shadows. And then I could look at it as, okay, this is, once I learn, I can take a little bit of that at the time. Yeah. And I can experience bliss, uh, through that yeah and then you can look at this as a potential of your personal bliss rather than suffering and it only takes is to learn how to process the pain it all it takes is to get the hang of it 
and understand that it is a game and it's just like in a video game we're fighting these little goblins and then when you win you get the experience points get level up and that's the state of bing, happiness bing. and bliss so bing. it's a potential for bliss <laughs> our shadows are potential for bliss for bing bing bliss <laughs> no that's absolutely it's a bing bing yeah it's, you get you bing bing and that's the other thing is you know you're doing the work because you will feel absolute ecstasy you know you're on the right path because it feels really really good it does feel really good yeah it feels amazing so uh, thanks for watching everybody yeah. and hopefully that uh, helps you in your own personal hero's journey oh, yeah. and uh let's play this game of life peace yeah. out thanks everyone thanks dominic i had a blast me too so fun all right till next time nice. that's good